no choice but to act purely on blind faith. There was no way to tell what error this device was tuned to, and I had neither the knowledge nor the means to set the machine myself. I hesitated only briefly. Then, throwing the switch, I hurled myself into oblivion and relinquished my will to the hand of fate. Beyond all hope and against all probability, it seemed that the device had unerringly delivered me to the error I sought. For these were Seraphim banners, and these vampires apparently the victims of their crusade. The coincidence seemed too convenient to naively ascribe to fate, but whether my opportune arrival had been orchestrated by Mobius or some other influence, I didn't know. If Janos Audrin still lived, I would find him. But I was wary of further deception, and resolved to tread carefully. For all the butchery of Mobius's crusade, this massacre was somehow more chilling. The killing fields of the Seraphim betrayed a kind of orderly ruthlessness, the cold-blooded righteousness of the true believer.
By all that is holy! Here at last, in the flesh, I beheld my former brothers in arms, the warrior priests of the Sarafan Order, their lives devoted solely to the annihilation of the Vampire Plague. And while I confess, I felt a twinge of longing, a pang of grief for what I had believed was my lost virtue. I regarded them now with none of the reverence I formerly felt. For I had seen the human face of the vampires, and now I beheld the monstrousness of these men.
demon. After my long journey, I finally stood on the threshold of enlightenment. For here was Janos Ordrin's mountain retreat, intact and unblemished. The upheaval that would one day topple this ancient edifice had not yet occurred. And while I had no certainty that Janos still lived, this scene boded well. Me. For I presumed that the collapse of the retreat must have followed the ancient vampire's demise. There was only one obstacle. How to reach the balcony suspended at that maddening height so far beyond my reach. For this was the architecture of winged creatures. The tattered ruins of my wings were of no use. I would need to devise some other means into that mountain.
The mountain's interior was hollow, I discovered, and graced with soaring architecture unique to its creators. As with the outer facade, these balconies and galleries could only be reached by those gifted with flight. With only my ruined wings to carry me, this towering labyrinth seemed impassable. But the object of my quest lay just beyond my grasp. For here, suspended at the apex of the chamber, was the threshold that surely led to the great vampire himself. I didn't know whether Janos Audrin was the monster depicted in the stronghold, or one of the noble creatures memorialized among the ruins of the ancient vampires. And I didn't care. Demon or angel, he alone held the key to my destiny.
I don't get it. Aren't these bridges supposed to come down when you shoot them with the light? I don't get it. Like, why, why are they staying up? I don't see any other way to get past... Get the pot from over there to the container over there. Maybe I'm just confused. I'll try and hit all of them. Okay, you know what? No. You're supposed to hit that with a blast of air. And then it'll break. And then there are more things you can shoot. Okay, there we go. That's that figured out at least. gonna disappear anyway.
Janus Audrin? It is heartening after all these years to hear my name spoken without contempt. Razia? My child, what have they done to you? I have been dragged through hell and back. All it seems to reach this moment. But I don't yet know why. For thousands of years I have waited alone here. Losing faith. At the time of the binding, nine guardians were called to serve the pillars, and I was summoned as the tenth guardian, the keeper of the reaver, the weapon of our salvation. Over time, our race died out, until I alone remained, sustained only by my obligation to you and by my guardianship of the blade. And the other nine? Why did their guardianship not sustain them? I don't know. As our race dwindled, the humans prospered. I have watched over the centuries as our history faded into myth and finally receded altogether. The humans have forgotten us entirely and claimed the pillars for themselves, wholly ignorant of their true purpose. To them, I am merely a devil the origin of their vampire plague. Why would the Pillars summon human guardians, then, if they are meant to be served by vampires? The Pillars choose their guardians from birth, Raziel, and vampires are no longer born. This is the crux of our dilemma, and this is the terrible irony. With their vampire purge, the members of the Circle have assaulted the very architects of the Pillars they are sworn to protect. They have embarked on a treacherous path. With every vampire they kill, the humans are slitting their own throats. <sighs> they know I'm up here, beyond their reach, and it terrifies them. You can see how they flaunt their kills to torment me. Or perhaps simply to lure me out. They have this foolish notion that destroying me will somehow topple our entire bloodline. <laughs> Thankfully, we're not that fragile. I have seen them mustering their forces in the village below. Yes. I don't know what they're plotting, but I fear our time may be bitterly short. Mankind seems to have brought you only torment and grief. 
You must hate them. They fear what they don't understand, and they despise what they fear. But no, I do not hate them. Vorador does. Mm, he has suffered much. He cannot forgive them. Should they be forgiven? They don't understand what they're doing. They are simply unenlightened and vulnerable to manipulation. So, it's all true then, what Cain and Vorador have told me. I really am some kind of unholy vampire messiah. Unholy? No. Messiah, perhaps. I don't like that word. It smells of martyrdom. Raziel, your role in this world's destiny is more crucial and more benevolent than you've allowed yourself to believe. Your journey will not be easy. Dark powers are allied against you. But I think you already know this. You appear to have been cruelly tested. The binding must be secured, Razia. The pillars are the lock. And the reaver is the key. Yes. The reaver is here. Why do I feel nothing? The most formidable weapon ever forged by our swordsmiths. They infused the blade with vampiric energy, empowering the Reaver to drain our enemies of their precious lifeblood. As Janos presented the blade, an inexplicable sense of dread crept over me, more palpable than anything I'd felt before. I was at once horribly repelled by the sword, and yet irresistibly compelled to touch it, to take it up. Please. Take it away from me. I fear you have been followed. You must save yourself, Raziel. Janos! No! My surroundings whirled sickeningly, and I found myself transported safely away from the ambush to an adjacent chamber. Janos had delivered me from the Seraphan, selflessly forfeiting his own safety to preserve my life. And now I feared that my newfound mentor would be slaughtered by the very crusaders I had so recently revered. The irony pierced me, and with dawning horror, I realized that I had been duped by Mobius from the beginning, for the Seraphim had simply followed the path I gullibly blazed through this sanctuary, and had arrived bearing Mobius' staff. Thus armed, they had Janos at their mercy. Through the door, I could hear them battling, less than a dozen paces away. And it may as well have been a thousand miles, for this barrier was sealed by elemental forces I did not possess. It seemed Janos had conveyed me into the heart of the Fire Shrine. I thought perhaps if I could galvanize the forge and imbue the Reaver in time, I might have a slim chance of saving Janos from his grisly fate. Thank you. 
I'll do the fire shrine tomorrow night. It's done playing for right now. It is past midnight. Should be really getting to sleep. Hey, thanks for watching.